Artist Kirk Williams is the embodiment of creativity, and trying to have a conversation with him can take you in many directions simultaneously. We visited Kirk in his Fergus Falls studio this winter and found him working on one of his fantasy pastels. What follows is classic Kirk on Kirk. I started with oil paintings and stuff in art school and drawing inks and stuff. And, and uh, the ink drawings were a spontaneous thing. That I couldn't be spontaneous with oil. And all of a sudden, back in the early 80s, I started with pastel. And thinking that it was a medium, a lesser medium, because it didn't have a very good name for itself. Oh, it's just a pastel or something like that. But I come to find out that, well, number one, pastel is pure pigment. There's no vehicle inside it other than probably a binder. And so it will far outlast more than what people think. And I want to change the world on this right now is that pastel will be here long before after all the oil crumbles off the canvases. Or not. This is my so, first favorite airplane. I am a basement uh, mole, you might say. I, I painted in basements and farms and stuff. I, I was self-taught. I had entered a show and won some awards, and my mother, who was very, very, very supportive, as well as my father, he needs to go to a school, a real school. So they picked Minneapolis College of Art and Design. And when I got to... Uh, MCAD, I took commercial art. I learned more out of concepts of art than I did of techniques because the world around you is your teacher. The people that you meet are your teachers. Uh, all the information is there if you want to go get it. And that was my philosophy and that's how I do it today. Drawing is my main staple. Of I love to, to draw and I got to the point where I can draw just about anything that I want to get out and I usually let my subconscious go and that's why I get symbolisms and stuff and so drawings is the basis of all my art except for assemblages. That, that's a whole different, that comes from Halloween Town and um, but uh, drawing is the basis of all my work. I have hundreds and hundreds of sketchbooks and I could be going from, I could not do another idea for the rest of my life and be working into the next life. Amen. I bought this Victorian house in the mid 80s. I got into auctions. The auctions were unbelievable back then. Then what happened is eBay came in and I was probably the first one to bid on eBay, and I did eBay stuff, and I could find everything you ever wanted to find in the world. And some of the stuff I just went hog wild. It would buy boxes and boxes of stuff that nobody wanted, and all of a sudden I started slamming this stuff together, and people were laughing and encouraging me. And It's kind of like building a ship in a bottle. I, I put this piece together, and then I used mineral oil, and, and then I seal them and some have lights. And mineral oil does not deteriorate a lot of stuff. You can't have organic pieces in unless they're totally uh, avoid of moisture. And so far I've accumulated over 80 pieces and I got so excited from the, from the enthusiasm from the people, I think I created another 20 pieces after that. I love it, it makes me happy, but my medium that I really love is my pastels. Another medium I've been working on for quite a few years is I started with sculpture and using clay pieces as well, but I wanted to get in the casting. These are bronze epoxy castings. And to give you an idea, they're pretty light. I also can make them heavy. They can be paper thin hang on walls. This is another form of casting. This is called stone casting, which is a very fine cement. And then I use wax. If you want to learn, you got to reach out. And so I, I talked to this sculptor who wrote an article on the 
American Artist magazine back in the 80s about epoxy casting. And I called him, and to my surprise, he was extremely, extremely helpful and stuff. So he gave me some pointers. I said, um, the Pioneer Corporation wants to commission a fountain, and I want to do it out of uh, epoxy. And he told me, uh, is it going to work? He says, I got some pieces that they outlast bronze pieces. Twenty some odd years later, they commissioned me to do another piece called Creation. Idea of creation of God is more poetic than anything, and it was it was a challenge, and I had to push myself. I I came up with this idea. They got excited, and they said, "Do it." The creator pouring out life, water of life. It is an extremely large piece. It it challenged me in every way, but I got through it, and it's at the Pioneer Home in the main auditorium. I have this place in my uh, repertoire of stories that the Prozacians, which were a race far before we were, but they were invisible. This is somebody's version of what a Prozacian might look like. I know that I'm going to sound like I'm a wacko, but I have this fantasy, fantasy story about Prozacians. When you get to the 1900s, something happens. And we know it's all of a sudden there's this revolution from, from steam to uh, jet airplanes and rockets and going to the moon and, and all this technology. Well, I, I thought, you know, how could that happen? Well, it's because of the Prozacians that were here years ago, millions of years ago, that helped form the earth. They were like God's little hands and... Um, they came forward with all this stuff that they knew what we could use with the light bulbs and and uh, um, GPS systems and stuff like stuff like that. But this one, we have not been able to produce yet. And I, this is like a, a suggestion. This is called a flumatron, where you blow into this machine right here, and it goes through all this stuff. And it's it's microbial and antimicrobial reaction with the breath. And all of a sudden, these microbials start a war into that glass tube right there. And there's a huge reaction. Just from that one breath, this guy will be able to go at least 200 miles on one breath. The Flumptron, Flump means breath in Prozacian. I'm gonna sound like a wacko. <laughs> <laughs>